Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, more of these conversations continuing this morning, and I hope you're having a very swell Wednesday. It's a little wet uh, down here in Lagos. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much that affects I have a friend who's looking for a house, and she says she wants it to rain, so she will know, <laughs> especially in this part of Lagos, <laughs> if it's going to flood when it comes. Anyway, that's just an aside. We're looking at uh, women in politics. Now, the UN um, Special Envoy... Deputy Secretary General, I beg your pardon, uh, that's uh, Amina, Amina Mohammed, has said uh, it is possible for a woman to replace President Muhammad Buhari as the next president of Nigeria. Are we ready uh, to help us uh, have this conversation, discuss the matter a little further? We have BC ADME, the MD, DCSL, Corporate Services Limited. Thank you very much for joining us on the breakfast. Thank you for having me. All right, so I'm, I'm going to kickstart with asking your thoughts. Um, is, is this wishful thinking? When you hear a statement like that from Amina Mohammed, uh, do you think that is just, oh, well, a politically correct statement to make? Or are, are we really headed in that direction? Thank you very much. Um, I will not categorically say it's wishful thinking, but as we stand, it will be very difficult. Um, because we have to face reality. Not that women don't have all that it takes. They have all that it takes and much more. However, um, the, the situation in Nigeria, you know, you know, begs uh, the question. There's a patriarchal system uh, of our society, uh, which means that men dominate almost all the aspects um, of our lives. You know, there's also the constitution itself. Um, so whilst the constitution grants um, equality um, to, uh, to men and women, non-discrimination uh, based on gender, uh, those rights are not enforceable. So if I feel disadvantaged as a woman, because, you know, like I said, because I'm a woman, I cannot enforce um, that right to non-discrimination, unlike the other or other rights. Uh, the same thing with rights to property. Constitution says as, as a man or a woman, I'm entitled um, to, um, to own uh, property. But we know that there are some cultures in Nigeria that um, forbid women uh, from holding property. So that right, for instance, is non-enforceable. Uh, non Again, we live in a male-dominated um, society, particularly the political structure. Um, the men just simply don't want the women there. Uh, the, the entire structure from um, the House of Reps all the way um, to the president itself is male dominated. How do women penetrate um, political parties? There's also access to funding. Um, women form the 65% of um, the 70% uh, population that is uh, living uh, below uh, the poverty line. So women really don't have access to the required funding. And you know, politics, particularly in Nigeria, um, is a numbers game. It's about funding. It's about who has uh, the deepest pockets um, of all. And then, of course, um, the more important one is that women don't have the appropriate uh, mentors and sponsors. Uh, they, they aren't enough male champions. Um, so a lot of the advocacy is left to the women themselves. I mean, shout out to the governor of Para State, His Excellency Abiraman Abiraza, who has 56% of his cabinet uh, made up uh, of women. So really and truly, um, like I said, it might not be wishful thinking, but indeed um, the, 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 the odds are skewed uh, heavily um, against women right now. That's, that's, that's my response to, uh, to, to that um, question. Okay. Um, the, um, uh, Mr. Samed said, it, uh, even in the face of obstacle, women should not relent in making mm -hmm. that effort. Power is not given to anybody. Um, it is taking that said, as nice as it sounds, in Nigeria, we've had women come out to present themselves as candidates in various uh, positions. We had two come to run for the position um, of president. I'm talking about uh, Madame Obieze Kwesili and uh, uh, Mrs. Remy Shonaya. Uh, Shonaya. Uh, both of them came out and to, to describe the support they got as abysmally low, uh, would be an understatement. What, what do you make of the uh, support that these women who actually braved the tide, uh, in spite of those obstacles you've mentioned, to come out to say, I want to be part of governance? So like I said, it's this lack of champions from the male folk. You know, the women uh, push themselves. We try, you know, I mean, Wimbis, for instance, is a as an organization, as the WIMPO, you know, which is women in politics. We've tried to do lots of advocacy to encourage more women uh, to come out. But you see, because it's typically male-dominated, you will need the male 
um, the, the, the male counterpart themselves, the men, to come out and support the women. I mean, I, 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 I totally get your point about the fact that it's not given, you have to take it. But in taking it, uh, there has to be a level playing field. The, the, the playing field is not level. And you see, it's not about tokenism. What do women bring to the table? You know, there's a lot of research that shows that women are better at decision making, they're better at managing risk, they are more organized. I mean, and just to give an example, you see what happened with the palliatives. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, to pull a punch here, but really and truly, um, if women had been uh, responsible for distributing the palliatives, again to just be practical, Wimbies, um, you know, in the heat of the lockdown and the and the um, the pandemic, you know, actually did give out palliatives in, 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 in to use that uh, now common um, expression, you know, and it was done seamlessly across uh, Lagos State, you know, without without any um, any upheaval. So indeed women are better at planning and um, organizing and organizing stuff. They also bring strong ethics and consistency to decision uh, decision making. Definitely they are more detailed and systematic. So it's not it's not tokenism, it's not one thing to just do it. I mean, if women make up almost 50% of the population in Nigeria and globally, then surely um, it means that if you don't have that representation, um, you cannot have um you, you cannot have um, adequate uh, it, decision. It, it, decision it, it still goes back so to something I was trying to say, uh, Mr. Dayemi. You know, to bring um, as many women to the table. It, um, it, it still goes back to something I was trying to say about if women, when they pull mm. together, can move mountains, why is it that yeah. they're not pulling together to, in spite of the inadequate support from the men, to make a headway mm. in this effort to bring women forward? I totally, I totally agree, and I think that there's much more that women can do. So, for instance, I had raised the issue about funding. So, women can perhaps come together, you know, crowdfunding, you know, and once there's a female candidate, let's all pull together and support institutions. I mean, institutions can actually support the women since there's a business case <clears throat> for doing that. But there's also a requirement for legislative reforms. You know, um, if you look at the constitution, and I mean, I don't know whether this is deliberate, but when he's talking about the office of the president, for instance, he uses um, the, 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 the he um, noun, he uses he throughout, you know, so is this, is this implying that, you know, there will never be a time when there will be a female uh, president? So there are certain things that will have to change uh, in, the, in the constitution, but to make those changes as well, you need to have more women in the legislature, you know, because like you said, you know, power is not just going to be uh, put to you, put, put to you um, on, the, on the platter. So women, yes, indeed, and I can say that women do do that um, at Wimby's, like I had said, uh, with Wimpole, we try to, um, you know, to advocate for more women to come onto the table to know their rights, you know, and indeed to support um, one another. Funding remains an issue. Education as well. Uh, one of the things that we also need to do as women <clears throat> and women groups is to monitor and, and do an evaluation, you know, and then do comparative studies you know, what is happening in other parts of the world, where are we, you know, so that maybe when these facts and figures are published, you know, people will then know that, you know, we're really not doing well at all. For instance, I mean, since uh, 20, 20 uh, years or so of, um, of demo democracy, we've only had six deputy governors. We have not had a single governor, you know, in Nigeria, you know, so uh, really and truly, um, we, we, we are indeed uh, lagging, lagging far behind. All right, um, Mr. Demi, I, I want to bring in uh, um, the uh, some other aspects of this. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting year 2020 is. Um, not yeah. long ago, we were celebrating Kamala Harris uh, for uh, being, of course, um, the pro projected uh, next vice president of the United States. Ngozi okonjo Well has also been in the news uh, because of the World Trade Organization. Um, but at the same time, we're having conversations about Rahman Sado, who, who's uh, uh, been, well, going through an ordeal um, recently because of a picture she posted on uh, social media. How do you think that we can break the traditional and religious uh, uh, bottlenecks that have also held women down from attaining these positions in the country. Considering our population, 51% to 49% on the average uh, male to female um, um, uh, population. So you, you would expect that there would be more. But how can we break the traditional and religious uh, uh, bottlenecks? It's education. Education and a mindset shift, you know. So first of all, like I said earlier on, uh, we need to appreciate the fact that it's not just tokenism. 
We're not just wanting women to be there because we want them to be there. Is there value? Obviously, there is value. So there needs to be more education. You know, we need to go back to the basics of the patriarchal uh, nature of Nigeria. You know, I mean, of most societies, a lot of societies have gotten out of it. I mean, not not everyone, because even in the United States, um, you know, you know um, that you know the, the Republicans, for instance, will typically would fight um, having a woman um, as as uh, as deputy as vice president. You know how much more um, as president. So indeed, uh, patriarchy is a major issue. And so education and enlightenment, and like I also said, you know, bring in the statistics. You know, let people see um, how how badly we're doing against the rest of the world. So hopefully, you know, when they see and we're able to compare, I mean, we like to compare ourselves to the best of the world, you know, but when we now then see how abysmally we're doing with respect to female representation, then uh, then perhaps we'll know that we're really at the bottom um, of the of the ladder and that much more needs. needs to. So it's education, you know, from the very basics, from, you know, the tertiary, um, primary education, all the way to tertiary. People should understand that equality is equality, equality of the sexes, is as important as, as, as every other fundamental right that everyone has. All right, thank you very much, uh, BC Adeyemi, for sharing your thoughts with us in the breakfast this morning. Thank you for having me. You have a great day. All right, uh, very interesting points uh, that were made there. And, um, you know, like I, the, the first question I asked, you know, is this wishful thinking or not? You know, because the bottlenecks are so much. You know, people yes, about I, I, I believe I still see women thrive in spite of it. I just think it's not decided Absolutely. yet. The day women decide that we are taking this, you know, they will. And I was going to ask her to uh, talk about the role of the Ministry of Women Affairs. They are supposed to champion education, enlightenment, you know, aside from empowering women, um, that is also important. The educational part of it, you know, building them to aspire for greater things other than just ensuring that there is a three square meal a day at home beyond the three square meal. What about the future of their children? Yes. What about the future of this country? It's a proven fact. She was just reiterating that women are better at a lot of things. It's not, that doesn't take away the fact that men are good at some of the things that they do, but women can be, be better. Yes, given I disagree with being men, given a chance. I should. think that I they should they say, it. you know, because the it, argument is beyond of, giving a chance. The argument a lot of people, you know, I saw someone on Twitter yesterday saying, "Oh, women have been, you know, given opportunities many times and they failed." And so they're naming, you know, certain examples. What about know, the that, millions of men, men that have failed. failed repeatedly and we still keep them uh, in power? It, right? That is not an excuse whatsoever because That's there not. are women who are champions, who are good at what they do, and given the the chance um, of the real election, also showed yeah. me a lot. But yes. we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.